If it wasn't clear from the welcome video, you are in Chem 104, which is Introduction to Chemistry. It's the first of uh, three terms. Uh, not all of you are going to go on to all three terms. Uh, a lot of you stop at the end of one, um, but this will kind of provide uh, kind of the fundamentals to be successful in those other two classes as well. So I always like to uh, start every uh, class with a little bit of lecture material. I'm not going to uh, give you too much. Um, I just wanted to show you, first of all, a couple of uh, heroes of mine. One is uh, Uncle Fester. Uh, I also really loved Beaker the Muppet, which, by the way, HBO now actually has a, or I guess it's HBO Max, has a new Muppet show for those of you that are as dorky as I am. I should mention that uh, these slides are all available underneath lecture PowerPoint item on the week one module. Um, keep in mind what the heck a chemist studies, and really, they study matter, which is basically everything that you can think of that is an energy. Um, and also, as a part of uh, chemistry, we also study the properties. Uh, we're going to define a property as something that um, is used to identify a bit of matter, um, and also the changes it undergoes. And there's uh, kind of a more specific text definition, which is, a uh, chemist is going to study the composition and properties and interactions of matter. It's pretty much the same darn thing. So just so that we can start the first couple of videos off in the right way and getting a pretty good idea of the um, so a couple of vocabulary words, uh, matter is defined as anything that has mass and also has volume. Uh, one thing that you're going to hear me refer to quite often in the um, first couple of weeks here is this idea of density um, and you probably know have heard about density before I have a, a little uh, example via demo that I'm going to show you in just a second here um, but it's defined as the amount of mass in a given amount of volume uh, so in the uh, example that you're going to see there's going to be a couple of different uh, items of matter that occupy the same volume but have vastly different uh, masses and much like uh, back in the days of the dictionary when you'd look up one definition and there'd be a bunch of words you didn't know in that particular definition and have to look those up too, we also have to define, well, what the heck is mass? Well, there's a much more scientific way of defining it, but I really think about mass as really um, <laughs> the junk in the trunk to be totally inappropriate about it, but it's really the, the amount of stuff that's in a sample of matter. And uh, I'm going to kind of leave it at that until we talk a little bit about atomic structure and you can kind of see what the the stuff is um, that I'm talking about in a, a given sample of matter. And then, of course, you're probably not going to be surprised that volume really measures the amount of space that something occupies. Um, so in other words, I have a bigger volume than um, one of my kids, for instance. So building on this idea that all matter has properties, right? These are things that we can use to identify a bit of matter. Um, and there's really two different major divisions between us talking about properties, especially in a chemistry class. You're going to hear me quite often refer to this um, idea of physical properties. And so it's important that we uh, get a definition for this. By the way, keep in mind that I have a, um, a resource guide that's available uh, underneath where you found this lecture that kind of helps to organize some of these definitions, especially when you go to take the exam or something. It's just really nice to be able to have all these definitions in one place. Um, but the one thing about physical properties is that you can, um, they are all characteristics you can use to identify the substance. And importantly, you, you cannot change the chemical identity of the substance in uh, kind of testing a physical property. Um, really common examples of things that are physical properties, in other words, things that you don't change the chemical identity by testing a bit of matter, are things like this. Right. And so you kind of notice that all of these different things, uh, some of the some you probably recognize, some you might not, but you'll certainly understand it as uh, as this class goes on. Um, well, melting point. Right. It turns out that if we have like an ice cube or something and we melt it like it's still water. Right. Just because it's turned into a liquid, it's kind of this idea of a physical property. These are the things that just kind of um, change you know, kind of the look of something, uh, or you're, you're changing something behind, um, you know, the way the substance appears, you're not actually changing the, the actual way that those, um, atoms are bonded together. 
Um, here are just a couple of really common ones, obviously densities on there. That's kind of like the, the big physical property to talk about, given the fact that chemists really, you know, it's their whole point of existence is to study the amount of mass and the amount of space that something occupies. Um, and it's kind of a, a central theme there. Um, all the rest of these, uh, one that may kind of be surprising to you is this idea of solubility. So it, it turns out um, the fact that let's say sodium chloride or table salt dissolves in water is actually an example of a physical property. Uh, associated with this idea of physical, you can also have a physical change, right? And kind of going with that theme of physical in general here is that really there's no change in the chemical identity of a substance when a physical change occurs. Um, so we've got an example of that uh, melting ice cube. That's a great example of a physical change. And when we talk about phases in day two, uh, you'll see a whole bunch more on this. Um, and I just had to include a cutting the cheese picture because I guess I'm a cheese ball. Uh, different uh, examples of physical change. I'll just kind of, you know, notice that pretty much anything, anytime you uh, try to identify a physical property of something, you're going to probably see a physical change, right? So, for instance, uh, dissolving one substance in another is considered a, a physical change. Um, uh, and so uh, these physical changes and physical properties are contrasted with this idea of chemical properties. This is where things get a lot more exciting because when you uh, test a chemical property, you actually change the chemical identity of that uh, original substance. Uh, you'll notice there's a very important word in this very next slide, this idea of chemical properties. Reaction, 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 decomposition, right? And also the ability to not react is an example of a, a chemical property. So as you might guess, um, uh, there's also this idea of chemical change, right? And so when you do a chemical change, you actually change the chemical identity of a substance. And this is really where you get like the wow factor in class, um, where, you know, here's an example of uh, a penny and you combine it with some sort of acid and then a bunch of orange stuff starts bubbling out that you really don't want anywhere near you. Um, and then the penny turns blue, right? This is a pretty obvious example of a chemical change. Um, anything, anytime you look at something and kind of go, wow, almost always it's some sort of chemical change that we're seeing because a lot of these changes are actually, um, you know, huge changes in the way that this thing is uh, kind of bonded. Here's just a real, quick example of something called the particle theory of matter. Um, and so you can kind of see what's happening in this Hindenburg disaster here is that the hydrogen gas, those two little white spheres, uh, got together with two little uh, red spheres called oxygen. And here we've got this little Mickey Mouse molecule called water. But uh, the actual change is associated with a huge amount of energy. Um, as you kind of change the bonding environment of these guys, right? It's no longer just hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. You've actually created an entirely new substance here known as water. And along the way, everything else ignites. So examples of chemical changes right here. Um, they're often when you see bubbling or some sort of drastic change in color. Got to be a little careful about color, though, because there are some physical changes that are just um, our color changes. Um, but uh, anytime you see fire or combustion, there's that's always an example of something actually changing the way that it's bonded together on a chemical level. Um, rotting, change in smell. Oh boy, this is a one way to end a, a presentation. Um, rusting or scaling and the, the sound of hissing, right? Basically, if you imagine yourself in lab um, and you're standing there and you see or hear anything that uh, makes you go, ah, that's probably a chemical change.